Firstly, Jamison, how much are you enjoying your rugby at the moment? You seem to be absolutely flying out there. Yeah, loving it, man. Um, it all seems to be going pretty well, and um, obviously happy to be a part of some some pretty good team performances. Uh, so, but I suppose at the end of the day, it doesn't really count for much unless we can get the job done. Get the job done against La Rochelle. So um, then that's the next challenge and what we look forward to. That game against Toulouse. Do you think that was? The most complete performance you've played in for in a blue jersey for Leinster? <clears throat> I think so, it'll be right up there, yeah. I've played in some um, some pretty good ones over the years, but uh, yeah, there's no doubt that was probably one of our, our most complete performances. What made it so special for you? Um, I suppose looking across the pitch, there's some pretty pretty awesome one-to-one matchups. Um, coming up against Dupont, he's obviously the best the best nine in the world some would even say the best player in the world so to get a chance to come up against those guys is always pretty special and um, to get the job done at home in front of in front of our fans was yeah uh, particularly special and you probably don't read much into it but the likes of even Danny Kerr obviously a great player himself saying that you're in the form of your life you'd be one of the best nines in Europe at the moment is it nice to read that sort of stuff? I know you're probably going to say, yeah, whatever, it's just part of the job. But what's it, you know, particularly from your journey and where you've come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't aware that he said that, but <laughs> uh, yeah, no, for sure, man. It's been like, I suppose, my growth as a player over the last number of years, I'd say in particular the last probably two or three years, um, has been really enjoyable, I suppose, is the main thing. and. Um, I've loved it and I've loved being part of this team, I've loved being part of the Ireland setup and um, long may that continue I suppose. What makes it so good this environment around with Leinster? I know you're winning every single week, that obviously helps, but it's just the camaraderie but also is it the push to get better every single week? Yeah that's it, I think the like the things you touched on, the camaraderie piece is massive, we've got a really good squad of lads that love to have a laugh and, and that kind of stuff which is important but um, at the end of the day, I think, yeah, the standards driven are, in here are pretty, are pretty high, and that's from the coaches and from the players. So, um, yeah, it's pretty awesome to be a part of. Like, it, there's a lot of driven lads in the building, and um, yeah, I suppose I've been taken a little bit taken back sometimes by the amount of drive from, especially the young guys, and their willingness to get better. And um, yeah, it's awesome, man. It's wicked to see. Yeah, and it's funny, you arrived here 2016, but it hasn't always been plain sailing. You know, you've had to do your time, especially with Luke McGrath there. Yeah. You know, you're still fighting up, I think, maybe to about a year ago, or even less than that, to be number one. What's that competition been like? Yeah, it's obviously been tough at times, but, like, that's no doubt why... Well, part of the reason I've become a better player is because of Lukey and, and the competition we have. Um, yeah, so, like, it's, like you say, it hasn't all been plain sailing. There was plenty of, like... Times where I was like, Jesus, is it, you know? Um, majority of my European appearances have been off the bench, like in the first five years. So um, I suppose I've got like a little bit more of an opportunity now, and um, I suppose a chance to show what I can do. But yeah, like 100, percent that's a lot of where a lot of the growth has come from. Was competing with Luki every day, and um, yeah, he's a great follower, and we get on pretty well. So. It is tough sometimes to compete, and um, but at the end of the day, is that's sport, and, and uh, that's what we're here to do. So, yeah, as you said, this is professional sport. What um, was there a moment that triggered you being like, "Gee, I'm flying here," or like you know, what sort of pushed you on from going from that sort of coming off the bench to actually getting those start? Was there anything what sort of has really helped your game over the last two, three years, as you mentioned? No, I suppose like just getting a chance. Like I, I started a few European games over the first few years but um, I felt I went okay but never got another opportunity so they were kind of like really spaced out those chances to play I suppose at the top at the top of the um, the European club game so I suppose just getting an opportunity and then with that comes a bit of confidence and um, yeah I suppose just confidence being in the arena and um, knowing that you can do it I suppose because like a lot of the times I probably would have questioned because I've never really like even in New Zealand I was mostly a bench player you know I never really started that many games so it is a lot different in terms of uh, your preparation and stuff so 
uh, yeah, once I got a bit of a chance, I suppose, and um, but like I say, just um, you start to feel yourself in that arena and um, get comfortable with it, I suppose. Yeah, you mentioned there coming off the bench, you come off the bench in the Super Rugby final in 2018 as well, in the Champions Cup final. Did you ever feel this actually could be me? It's changed so much, but did you ever think, geez, I could just be a bench player for my career? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like I, over, I think someone read it to me one day, I was like, maybe after the first four years or something, over 50% of my perform of my appearances have been from the bench. Um, and I was like, yeah, I suppose I was a little bit taken back, but I was like, geez, this could be it for the <laughs> for the for the foreseeable, you know. So, um, but yeah, look, that's I suppose how it works out, and thankfully I've got an opportunity to to do a bit more these days, and um, yeah, enjoying it. Yeah, too right, and you've got a Champions Cup final to look forward to. No bigger game against <laughs> La Rochelle. How desperate are you to get those five stars on the jersey? Yeah, man, massive. It's obviously, uh, but I think. Everyone's really striving for that, aren't they? Like La Rochelle, the same. They obviously fell over in the final last year, so they'll be hungry for it as well. It's going to be a massive occasion, and um, we just have to do our best in the day to day and prepare well for for what the occasion will bring. Yeah, I've spoken to coaches in the past about Leinster have come on stock against La Rochelle last year or Saracens the year before. People say, "Oh, it might have been size from the outside." From a player, I've never actually got the opinion. Why do you think Leinster have come on stock over the last couple of years? Uh, I don't know. Like in fairness to Lara Shaw last year, they were they were unbelievable on the day. Um, we would have had to have a, a pretty top performance to beat them. They were men possessed that day, and um, more than likely it'll be the same next week. So we're gonna have to find a way to do better. And um, I suppose a lot of it is just the, the ability to adapt on the run, eh? Because it's not all gonna go your way. So uh, problem solving during the game and. Um, yeah, and hopefully it goes a bit better. Yeah, it obviously looks like Kerr Barlow is going to be out, which is so disappointing for him. Another player, Ehi West, obviously doesn't take a genius there. He struggled off the tee. What's it like as an opposition player seeing that? Obviously at the time you're like, geez, that's that's good for us. But is it really difficult to watch as well? Because you played with him, I think, mm. in the past as well. He's probably a friend. Yeah, yeah he is a mate of mine. So, yeah, it's tough to see, obviously. As tens who pride themselves on the goal kicking, and um, when they're having an off day, it is yeah. I suppose it's hard for them because it's like you know, nobody else in the team feels that amount of pressure. It's a, it's a game within a game for them. So, um, yeah, but like <laughs> I suppose last year he was unbelievable against us. He kicked all his goals. So, uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be expecting him to have another big one next week yeah. or this week. Sorry. Give us an insight into your relationship with Johnny Second and what's he like to actually be alongside. You're probably the closest player on the pitch to him, so it'd be good to know. <laughs> uh, yeah, awesome, really, man. He's a he's a top guy first of all, and um, like everyone touches on, he's the standard bearer in Leinster, and uh, I suppose we're lucky enough to work alongside him and uh, have have learned so much, I suppose, over the last five or six years from from working with him. Um, but yeah, overall, he's awesome, man. We're lucky to have him on our team, and. Uh, like I say, he drives the standards up, whether it's our day-to-day in training, whether it's in a match. Uh, he's always the one to to drive it on. So, yeah, very lucky to play alongside him, for sure. Great stuff. A few more from me, just to finally finish. Your game, over the last couple of years, you seem to create more gaps than ever, I think, from what I've seen. <laughs> Could be wrong or not. <laughs> but looking around the fringes, is it a case of experience and maturity that has helped that? Or why do you think you are creating more gaps as you go? Um... I think a lot of it is down to what happens in front of me, so that's, I suppose I'm the benefactor, I, I think, of a lot of the hard work that goes on in front of me in terms of carry and clean and um, lads' ability at the breakdown is is really good, so like we've got some pretty awesome coaches in that space and um, like in the Ireland setup with Paul O'Connell, he's unbelievable in that area and I think a lot of lads have come on leaps and bounds since working with him, so uh, yeah, I think a lot of it is down to what happens in front of you and uh, the quicker that stuff's happening, the the more space hopefully will appear for for the nines to run. So, um, yeah, I think overall it, it, it is a lot. A lot of it is down to what happens in front of me, the lads carrying and, and uh, cleaning the rocks. Yeah, you're certainly getting plenty of quick ball. <laughs> this current environment you're in at the moment, 
would you say it's the best in a club level you've worked with? I know you did win a Super Rugby with the Canes, but is this the best you've been involved in? Uh, hands down, yeah. It's a uh, it's pretty incredible setup. I mean, it's even come on a lot since I first arrived. So um, you know, I can't speak highly enough of the of the first of all the coaches and the backroom staff driving it on, but um, the players as well. There's obviously a pretty awesome leadership group and. They have always the standard bearers, and um, but yeah, with hands down, it's the best environment of. Like obviously, the other ones I've been a part of would have come along since that time as well, like the, the Hurricanes, and um, there's no doubt they've got better setups nowadays. But yeah, this is the best one I've been a part of for sure. That's pretty cool. And we bring it back to the final, La Rochelle. Obviously, some pretty big boys. What do you feel you have to get right this time round? Most importantly, to get over the line and win that Champions Cup. Um, yeah I suppose doing our best to nullify their threats they have across the park um, they're some unbelievable poachers and the breakdown they you know got a lot of turnovers, turnovers against us the last day so um, that's obviously going to be a big area of focus uh, there's no doubt they're going to come hard at the breakdown again so that'll be one big thing and then uh, I suppose it's just the basics then after that and looking after our set piece hopefully that goes well and um, yeah hopefully we can put them under a bit of pressure it's obviously going to be very difficult but yeah challenge we look forward to but you obviously believe if you get the game plan right and play the way Leinster play you're good enough to beat them yeah for sure I think that's obviously the level of belief you have to have to especially going into a final so um, yeah we'll prepare accordingly and, and we look forward to the big day and finally if I make it you're only 30 number one for club and country what do you still want to achieve in the game? Is it as simple as trophies or Ireland caps, or how does it all work for you in your inside your head? Um, oh, I don't know. That's a difficult question. Uh, but yeah, just to keep improving, I suppose, and um, playing at the at the highest level is like, yeah, I suppose where the the biggest rewards are and the most pressure as well. But that's like, I think that's. I think that's what you want as in life, and um, yeah, it's to be challenged on a daily. So there's no doubt I get that in here. I get that in links to um, every day. So yeah, it's just to I suppose hopefully a bit of a continuation and a bit more improvement. Brilliant. All the best on Saturday, Jameson. Hope it goes well for you. Thanks so much. For your Thanks time. very much. Appreciate it.